This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. Tonight on the South Today, excitement is growing with just 100 days until the first ball is bowled with the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup. A Dunedin scientist's work is set to aid a NASA drone in its hopes of finding signs of life on one of Saturn's moons. And a Dunedin's festive celebrations will be a lot tamer this year as the DCC cancels events or moves them online. Tenakoto Kato Kia ora. I'm Simon Anderson. It's 100 days until the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup tournament hits off. Many of the world's leading women's players are set to compete in Dunedin from March the 5th next year, and the excitement is growing among fans. A very civilised game of backyard cricket today at Dunedin's Olverston Historic House. Otago Sparks and White Ferns players Susie Bates, Hayley Jensen and Kate Ibrahim getting into the spirit of the game. This afternoon's event was one of a number across the country, marking a hundred days until the ICC Women's World Cup gets underway in Aotearoa, New Zealand. The Otago Sparks players matched up against ICC Women's World Cup champions Anna Campbell, Megan Gibbons and Tania Cassidy, who were dressed in period costume. Women's contribution to the sometimes civilised game is believed to include the 19th century invention of overarm bowling. When Englishwoman Christiana Willers was apparently frustrated by the way large voluminous skirts got in the way of the then ubiquitous underarm technique, New Zealand's first recorded cricket match between two female teams was played in the Wairarapa way back in 1867. But as for the modern game... Three round-robin World Cup matches are scheduled to be played at Dunedin's University Oval, featuring the White Ferns, South African and English teams. In Dunedin, the South Today. Meanwhile in Christchurch, the sun was just rising as New Zealand's cricketing royalty of both the women's and men's game unveiled their city's countdown clock for the 2022 World Cup. In Christchurch this morning, cricketing legend Sir Richard Hadley was on hand to help unveil the countdown clock that marks 100 days until the first ball is bowled in the Women's Cricket World Cup. Sir Richard admits he's a great fan of the women's game and called on Canterbury fans to come out and support the tournament. Yeah, I think it's important for Canterbury people to get out there and support our team. Uh, we've got some great players. Uh, and there's a lot of magnificent women cricketers, superstars of the game uh, that will be playing here as well and they've got excellent skill sets and uh, their game has uh, just gone in the right direction uh, uh, so it's worth turning up and, and watching these women uh, play the game of cricket. Current White Fern and Vice Captain Amy Satterthwaite is also excited about the big event and would love to see large crowds at the matches. Oh, I'd love them to turn up in droves and um, to come out and support uh, the World Cup, I think it's a really awesome opportunity for us to showcase female cricket uh, in New Zealand and especially in Canterbury, we've had a rich history in, in Canterbury of successful female cricket teams and um, you know, I think it's an awesome opportunity for people to come out and really show their support and, and be involved in what's going to be a really exciting uh, tournament. The White Ferns will feature in one of three pool matches at the Christchurch's Hagley Oval. The venue will also host one of the semi-finals of the Women's World Cup as well as the final in early April of next year. In Christchurch, the South today. A Dunedin scientist is helping build a data set which will be crucial for a certain dragonfly. It's the name of a NASA probe being sent to examine the atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan with the aim of investigating whether the moons ever had forms of life. A machine made to replicate a Titan. This apparatus, built in a Dunedin laboratory, is simulating the atmosphere of a moon more than a billion kilometres away. Otago University's Dr. Courtney Ennis is using the device to mimic atmospheric compounds of Saturn's largest moon, Titan, to build data to aid a spacecraft. NASA is planning to send a probe called Dragonfly to Saturn's moon, and Ennis's work will ensure the rotorcraft knows what to look for when it touches down. We're trying to replicate some of this chemistry and predict the organic molecules that the Dragonfly might find um, in the decades ahead of us. Titan has a similar atmosphere to Earth. Dragonfly will use Ennis's data set to try and find signs of life there. We're providing that comparative data so when Dragonfly lands on the surface of Titan 
it can perform its analysis and give immediate response of what compounds are found there and if they're implicated in the origin of life. And due to Titan's similarities with Earth, the information from Dragonfly could help provide answers to how life might have started on our home planet. Dragonfly blasts off in June 2027, but isn't expected to reach Titan until 2036, where it will spend almost three years exploring the moon. In Dunedin, the South Today. Waka Kotahi, the NZTA, says it doesn't know what is causing parts of a newly resurfaced section of State Highway 1 in Oamaru to slump. The NZTA completed a nearly $2 million improvement project in April, resurfacing a section of State Highway 1 between Redcastle Road and Virgil Street. But sections of pavement underneath the new surface have already begun slumping, despite being designed for a 25-year life based on traffic loading and ground conditions. The Transport Agency is working with the Waitaki District Council to investigate what's causing it. The site has been inspected by NZTA staff, with contractors working on temporary fixes until permanent repairs can be completed. A Dunedin City Council isn't quite cancelling Christmas, but it is planning a quieter festive season. The lighting event for the Octagon Christmas tree will now be moved online, while New Year's Eve will be welcomed in with a whimper rather than a bang. DCC Community Services General Manager Simon Pickford claims COVID-19 restrictions mean large public events in the Octagon aren't possible this year. The popular New Year's Eve celebrations have been cancelled, including the live bands, fireworks and food trucks. The council says it's still waiting for more detail about large-scale outdoor events under the government's new traffic light system. Without that clarity, they've made the difficult call to cancel activities. A traffic management plan will still be in place for New Year's Eve, with hospitality venues around the Octagon expecting a busy night. The government has announced major changes to MIQ requirements for Kiwis returning from overseas, with a phased wind-down of the scheme. From mid-January, full vaccinated New Zealanders will be able to fly home from Australia without going to MIQ, with all other countries being added from mid-February. However, the government is still ordering returnees to isolate at home for seven days. Other vaccinated travellers will be welcomed into the country from the end of April without going through managed isolation, but will require regular testing after they arrive. If I are still to come on the south today, another accident for the ACC as they mishandle confidential information and neighbours to the rescue in a Christchurch house fire. See you soon. Oval this Sunday the 28th of November for a double header. The Sparks versus the Central Hines and the Bolts versus the Central Stags. G'day, Marina Lamplas and the Sparks here. We have a fantastic team this year, so come down and support us. We'd love to see you there. Black Friday Flash Sale. It's a total price blackout at My Mate John's. For a limited time, he's taken a whopping 30% off everything. And My Mate John. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Hi, it's November. We think that's too negative. We're calling it Govember. Time to go shopping. We've got a huge amount of stock we've bought in a special for you. So there's big selections of short sleeve shirts and polos, long sleeve casual and fashion shirts, jeans, trousers, casual trousers, shorts. Go check it out at Alex Campbell Menswear. Go while it's safe. Go while you can. Go while you save. It's Govember. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So remember, it's not November, it's Govember. Alex Campbell Menswear.
A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. I think the best thing about it is we're all there to ride safely and deliver that message to you know some of the kids that are out there. You know, hopefully showcase that riders and drivers can integrate together. So yeah, it's just just being part of sharing that message really of riding safely when you're out on the road. No mind all, welcome back. Concerns over the Accident Compensation Corporation's handling of private information is in the spotlight again after a Southland woman received someone else's private information. Invercargill resident Reba Pottinger requested a copy of her own records and picked them up from the Invercargill ACC office. However, she got a surprise to discover the envelope also contained a set of records belonging to a woman from Hamilton. The files contain sensitive information including a full medical record, address and phone number. The blunder comes after more than a dozen employees in Hamilton were suspended over allegedly sharing clients' private information on social media. Dunedin staff were also suspended for inappropriately sharing client information. An ACC spokeswoman says they are investigating the alleged breach, which is likely the case of human error. Neighbours in Christchurch's northern suburb of Belfast pitched in to help rescue a terminally ill woman from a burning cottage today. But the incident left one of the rescues, rescuers in hospital himself. When neighbours spotted the flames and smoke this afternoon, one didn't hesitate, diving into the flames to try and help out. But it meant a trip to the emergency ward for Dean Harrison to be treated for smoke inhalation. His daughter Maya says her father needed oxygen after he managed to convince his pensioner neighbour to stop searching for a handbag as the flames took hold of her cottage around noon. She was out front of the lawn waving her hands around and my dad was standing in the window there and saw her so he ran over and she was wanting to go back in because she saw the fire to, for, to grab her handbag and he was calling to her trying to get her to come back out for obvious reasons, yeah. and then he, she wasn't listening, so he had to run in and go get her. Maya says her brave dad dodged the flames as he tried to help the elderly lady. She went through the gate on the side towards the back door, and he went in after her. It was, I could hear him yelling. I was right in front of the lawn, mm -hmm. and came back out with her, and she was we went back again, um, very persistent for some reason. Building owner Johnny Brewer raced back from his work to help out at the fire. I was at work, um, got the old phone call saying your house is on fire, so came home as quick as I could. Um, yeah, as far as we know, the neighbours were putting up the Christmas tree and um, noticed smoke coming out the front of the house, so right. he came over, helped the mother-in-law out because uh, she's living with us, right. um, right. terminally ill. Fire investigators say it's not yet clear how the fire started, but their work will continue. In Christchurch, the South Today. Progress is continuing on efforts to train dogs to sniff out cancer as a method of early detection. And the team at Canine Medical Detection Dogs received more than they bargained for when they visited Dunedin Primary School. Pupils at East Tyree School recently lined up to meet two special canines. 
medical detection dogs, Magic and Frida, are able to sniff out cancer. Yeah, so we have to be very clear, our dogs do not go into the community to sniff people. So we have samples that are sent to us. Like any new diagnostic test, we have to be uh, very rigorous and robust with our uh, training and our methodologies. Canine Medical Detection New Zealand founder and chief executive Pauline Blomfield said the dogs could smell volatiles emitted from cancer cells. Staff from the Tyree-based Charitable Trust visited East Tyree School to explain their work and pick up a hefty collection. Pupil Ruan and Hammond said the school ran a dress-up day with a gold coin donation and were able to raise $600 for the Charitable Trust. We thought it would be a good idea to raise money for Canon Medical Detection because I know that we all want to help prevent cancer in New Zealand. Blomfield said community donations were gratefully accepted as about half a million was needed to continue their groundbreaking research. In Mosgiel, for the South Today. After the break on the south today, supporters put in place for Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt and in weather the late week rain approaches. Hea koko akinei. Black Friday flash sale. It's a total price blackout at My Mate John's. For a limited time, he's taken a whopping 30% off everything. 30% off Dunedin's biggest range of beds. 30% off Dunedin's lowest price furniture. 30% off everything store-wide. Plus, pay it off over 30 months interest-free. Black Friday flash Where sale. Did you get that furniture from? Stafford Street. And my mate John. Get on down to the University of Otago Oval this Sunday the 28th of November for a double header. The Sparks versus the Central Hines and the Bolts versus the Central Stags. G'day, Marina Lampard from the Sparks here. We have a fantastic team this year, so come down and support us. We'd love to see you there. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. Just plan your route a little bit, choose nice and quiet roads. In the winter, it's always nice to ride north and south. Uh, that way you get the, the driest route and less likely to hit black ice.
Hoki mai noa. A support group has been set up for Invercargill Mayor Sir Tim Shadbolt as the City Council plans to transition from its two internal appointees. The group would include up to five councillors with the aim of providing the Mayor with ongoing support required for wellbeing. However, two City Councillors, Ian Pottinger and Deputy Mayor Nobby Clark, tried to block the creation of the support group, questioning how worthwhile it was. The council has also dumped its controversial media protocol, which some believed limited their ability to raise topics of concern or personal opinions to the media. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Excitement is growing with just 100 days until the first ball is bowled in the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup. A Dunedin scientist's work is set to aid a NASA drone in its hopes of finding signs of life on one of Saturn's moons. And Dunedin's festive celebrations will be a lot tamer this year as the DCC cancels events or moves them online. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, we welcome Deputy Editor Craig Page. Kia ora, Craig. Good evening. We've got a story that's going to counter the uh, the bad news about New Year's Eve celebrations right, uh, being cancelled. Uh, there's, there's plans ahead for a, a new music f festival for Dunedin in April next year. It's Fantastic. Called Fortune Festival, uh, and the plans are to hold it at the University Oval um, and bring more than a dozen New Zealand bands together for it. Mm. Um, R18 event, so uh, keep the youngsters out, and um, they're hoping for crowds between four and 5,000. They're going to have several stages. Wow. Uh, opening up with the main stage on the University Oval itself, sort of using those banks and the grandstand, the course as a focus. So, mm. um, yeah, exciting times, similar to a lot of these, uh, I guess, these music festivals that are going on around the country over summer. So, um, with with the students in town and down at that end of, of the city, it's got, it's got a ready market, I guess. So. Yeah. Um, they're hoping to announce the first bands later this week, so uh, everyone keep an eye out for that. We'll watch out. to dash off and get your tickets. Uh, big news today also for those with the travel bug, uh, international borders due to be open up from next year. Um, New Zealanders can return from Australia from January 17 and then other parts of the world from um, middle of February at this stage and maybe yep. full international travel from April. So exciting times there. We mm. talked to um, some of the locals who have been desperate to get back to New Zealand for several weeks, months now yep. um, about the news and they're pretty excited as you can imagine. Uh, we've also had a look at the 100 days to New Zealand, uh, the Women's Cricket World Cup. Yep. We've had a chat to Susie Bates, of course, Susie Bates and Katie Martin, a couple of Otago stalwarts. They've played uh, hundreds of games for New Zealand, yet to play a home get international. So um, I think they were due to play one a couple of years ago when it rained all day, so they never got on the field. So they're pretty excited about that. Yep. Um, three games planned for Dunedin, so uh, that'll be a great, great spectacle. And also continuing the cricket theme, uh, Black Caps play the first test against India starting tomorrow. Um, on spin friendly conditions, not surprisingly. Yep. Uh, so we have a look at, at New Zealand's chances in that. Of course, in recent seasons and leading into the World Championship final, we've relied so heavily on our seam attack. Mm. So it'll be mm. a different focus. So it's going to be interesting. Well, that's great. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the southern view, looking south while standing on a traffic island on Princes Street. Looking at the situation, it still looks like a wet weekend ahead for the region with light rain developing on Friday and heavier falls for most on Saturday and Sunday. Until then it's still cloud for most, spotty in the northwest, 18 degrees for both towns. Partial cloud 2 in the northeast, Nelson reaches 20, Blenheim up to 24. Spotty cloud down the Canterbury coast as well, Kaikoura 21, Christchurch 19 and Ashburton equaling the South Island's height of 25. Fresh northwesterlies blow through the southern region carrying heavy cloud later on and for Lumsden and Gore some very early weekend rain, all towns reaching 18 or 19 degrees. The rain also reaches Tiano on 17 degrees. Northwesterlies blow across central too, but that only carries high cloud for the remaining centres on 22. Further north, northwesterlies up here as well, stronger inland where it's 24 degrees, and high cloud across the region on the coast to Amaru reaches 23, Timaru sharing that high of 25. 
The cloud thickens in Dunedin tonight with an overnight low of 9. Similar tomorrow as it starts off fine before the cloud thickens again. Some light easterly winds, a high of 21 and a low of 9. And it's overcast with mild northerlies on Friday giving way to that late week rain and colder southeast winds, a high of 18 and a low of 10. Invercargill sees cloud increase tonight as well with a low of 9 degrees. That carries through most of tomorrow with fresh northwesterly winds, a high of 18 and a low of 11. And that rain develops Friday replacing early westerly winds, a high of 14 and a low of 10 degrees. That's the news this Wednesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Nō rārā kia pai te pō, ka kita anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.